Hello, and welcome back to AI for Retail Executives. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the OODA loop and its applications for retail. OODA stands for uh, Observe, Orient, and Decide, Act. And so this framework, I think, is massively parallel for automated, automating systems, um, uh, uh, automated AI systems, and especially in environments where the, the, um, the real world changes all the time. So uh, I'll talk about two examples real quick and how OODA loop was applied to automate that entire system. First, uh, we talked a little bit about the Aegis missile system. And so in this example, we have a boat in the water and we'll give a little, that's a nice little sailboat here. And, uh, and this is, let's say North Korea and North Korea launches a missile and we want to very, oh, that's, this is going the wrong way. Okay. And they're launching a missile at uh, San Francisco, let's say. And we see this boat where this boat is going to uh, observe constantly. It's doing these, it has a, and I'll write this here, a SPY-1B radar. That's a very sophisticated, very accurate, uh, real-time uh, phase array radar that's doing sweeps all the time. And it's constantly doing a sweep uh, of any uh, any anything that's flying, basically. Um, and there's this massive dome that it's constantly doing these sweeps and patterns on to detect uh, what's changed in the environment. Um, so, and it will generate a track for this and it will add it to C and D, command and decision, which is the orient. So this is observe, this is orient, this is decide, act. So we'll give it to C and D here and we'll say, hey, he, we think we see a new track. Go and, and try to perform some analysis on it. Is this a friendly? Is this not a friendly? Is it, where did it come from? Uh, it came from North Korea, from a known military base. That's orientation. And so it's like, okay, not good likely a nuclear missile. Uh, we need to do something about it. And, and then it will send this over to uh, make a decision. So Aegis display system to the operators to say, hey, what should we go do here? Um, and then they can make a decision to go and act, uh, launch a uh, SM6 missile, some uh, anti-ballistic missile system, uh, anti-ballistic missile. Um, and, uh, and we'll say this is a the weapon combat system or vertical launch system that will react and shoot, uh, launch here a missile to try to go and hit this guy. And every second, every five seconds, every 10 seconds, it's constantly running through this loop again and again and again to uh, reobserve. So once we launch the missile, we have to go start tracking it, it ourselves. So the SPY-1B radar will track that and will uh, you know, try to um, react and try to hit the missile. So um, another example of, a, of an, an OODA loop implementation, very similar in nature, uh, an autonomous system that, uh, autonomous self-driving car system. And so here's my lame little car um, a windshield wiper here. There you go. This guy's going this way. Um, there's a bunch of cameras all throughout the car that are constantly and lidars that are doing uh, sweeps and inferring this 3D point cloud. And if I looked at it from overhead, you know, typically you'll see it that way. I see a car here. I see a track here. I see another car here. Maybe there's a car right next to me. And this is like some highway like this, um, for example. And I will, and I'll apply again the OODA loop. And so I, my LiDAR system is doing observe. It's constantly detecting new tracks. And oh, there's a, a pedestrian that just stepped right in front of the car. Um, I observe that. I have to orient myself. Is it likely that that's a person? Is it likely that that is a picture of a person? Maybe on the back of a truck. Oh no, it was, it was actually a picture uh, on the back of a pickup truck or a bus. 
um, cause it was inside of another bounding box, which is of a car, uh, of, of, of a, of a, um, of a bus or something like that. So this is the orient. Um, and we have some system there. Uh, and then we have a decision process, which maybe we give it the, the prompt to the cost, uh, to the driver. And since right now it's not, uh, L3 autonomous self-driving car, maybe we're just doing, um, uh, a notification system to the, uh, uh, driver to say, Hey, watch out. There may be a, 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 a person up there. Um, and so we'll make a decision there and then act. Um, if they hit okay, stop the car with a brake or something else, or the system can automatically do it if we had that level of confidence in our um, system and it will brake the car or swerve left or right and swerve left, swerve right, brake, um, whatever, what have you. But it's constantly doing this OODA loop, OODA loop, OODA loop to, uh, to react to the changes in the environment. Um, and the quicker it can react, the more performant of the system it is. So now I want to talk about retail. And so in, in retail, you have a massively, what would it, they would say, a stochastic system where you don't know actually what's happening, uh, um, what's going to happen in the future. Uh, not in one hour, not in six hours. Because at any one time, Francois can walk into a store and st and take all the product, uh, all the Tide, uh, you know, all the Pepsi two liters. Um, that would be uh, unmodelable unless you knew my brain, It'd be which is impossible to know. So um, you have this store and you have, uh, for every single SKU, you have some expected uh, sales for that SKU. And you can, you're going to slot on that, uh, your planogram will be set to expected demand. If expected demand is correct, which in my experience, it is always not because you, the retailers don't have um, uh, 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 loss sale estimates. They only have sales estimates. So they're chronically under allocating on uh, high moving or high or, uh, 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 products that are uh, chronically out, things like that. Um, and so uh, let's say that you will, if that's your Gaussian, you will uh, perform shelf capacity. You'll allocate shelf capacity to one sigma, let's say. And so if this is, you expect to sell 50 uh, cans of Campbell's soup a day, uh, maybe you'll all allocate shelf capacity of 65, 75, I don't know. Um, and then so you have that. And then there's what the real world happens. So let's say that actual demand looked like that. Well, you actually over uh, allocated that skew or actual demand was like this you dramatically underinvested in that, in that skew, uh, way under allocated. Well, how long does it take you today to react to that, to that event, to that drastic change in what expected distribution was to actual? Um, I have seen retailers, it takes a year to adjust to that. Uh, it takes a very long time and definitely not on a per store level. And so in retail, in my experience, this is perfect for the OODA loop. You're constantly looking at, uh, what are my out of stocks? What's chronically going out of stock? Products that are going out of stock, you know, three, four times a week um, before 4 p.m., let's say. Uh, and you should, in that store in particular, if that's where it's, what's happening, because maybe there's um, a local lacrosse team that loves LaCroix and they are clearing you out every opportunity that they can. Um, and then they go out of stock by 4 p.m. So you need to satiate that demand. And your, your model, your actual, your expected versus actual could be very, very different. Um, and so this is where observe, orient, decide, act comes in. So in our experience, I think that the OODA loop provides a lot of promise here. And this is the operating system that we're building. Whether or not you're using ours or something equivalent is really uh, uh, unimportant to me, but I, it is important that you are using something that mirrors this. And so in observe, you know, we recommend our shelf cams, but there's something else. Anything else that you can use that can act, you have to have accurate and real time uh, uh, data to feed this. If you have garbage uh, uh, in your observation or it's very late, you cannot play this game. It just won't work. And so that's what, what, what we recommend here is to iterate through the OODA loop as much as possible. So your shelf cams can uh, take an image every hour of every day, it will, it will update 
what your associates do. So as second it sees an out of stock, um, it will, let's say that there is currently all of these out of stocks, you know, item one, two, three, four, five. And uh, this is ranked by lost sales. So you should restock the thing that has the highest amount of lost sales first. Um, and so let's say all of a sudden Tide goes out of stock. And that becomes, uh, we look this up and we sort this out and it, that's the number one most important thing to go and restock. That gets to the top of the list and I don't care if the person was working anything else, that, that associate should start working the out of stock, uh, uh, out of, uh, the Tide out of stock now. And so it can, that can happen within 30 minutes of the detection. And the way that can work is there's an observe step. So we'll observe that the out of stock just occurred. We'll orient. This is the orientation step. We'll say, okay, of the things that we could possibly uh, uh, work on, what should we go work on? So I'll orient myself on all the things that are going on. We'll make a decision. We'll say, yes, there is, uh, um, there is uh, on-hand inventory. It's a controllable out of stock. It's a workable out of stock. I have it on hand. Um, it is a very high loss uh, sales uh, skew. I can work it now. So then I will add this here. And this system we call uh, um, focal impact here system. And so that kind of actually both flows into here. And then action, we have this thing called action tool, which you may have as well. That helps your associates know what to work. And uh, and so an action tool uh, will, is a tool that is on the Zebra handheld that will feed, that will, will re-rank sort this uh, prioritized list, this priority queue, and will update the um, your list for them to go work that thing next, and then it will run another OODA loop. So let's say they they said that they they restocked that skew. Well, we, we'll take another image and within the next 30 minutes to detect if that's true. And if they didn't, we'll go back in the OODA loop and add it back and say, you did not restock this skew and it will maybe count against them. Or uh, if they did restock it, then they get a big thumbs up. They saved the day. Um, and so that's the OODA loop. Uh, there's a lot of other pieces in this. There's a, a, you know, if you look at your systems today, Think about how long it would take you to react to Francois walking into your store and wreaking havoc and, cr cr you know, maybe doing a shelf scrape and stealing that product, maybe coming in and buying a lot of, uh, of a certain product that is way different than what you expected. Um, you need the system of the future will be able to react very quickly, will be a, the smart system, and that will ensure that every hour of every day, your associates are working on the next best thing they could possibly work on, conditioned upon the state of the store right now, not the state of the store yesterday, not the state of the store a week ago. It is very important and it will result in meaningful increases in EBITDA uh, if you can react to, uh, if you can do this observation every hour of every day, and it's very accurate, very real time, you can orient yourself to know what's the most important thing to work on. You make that decision. You send it down to the to the people that can actually make action against it, um, and you go oop, oodle loop, oodle loop, oodle loop. All right, that's the oodle loop. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next lecture.